here with Plans Meet Paper. And today I'm here to show you my A5 Filofax Planner. And I'm just gonna walk you through it pretty quickly. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on any individual section. I just wanna give you an overview of it. <laughs> I've been putting off filming this video for forever because I'm kind of in a season where I keep changing my mind about how I want to plan. And so I keep thinking, oh, I need to figure that out and then I'll film this video. But I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna film it right where it's at right now and then um, maybe you guys can give me some feedback on what you think is more functional, more aesthetically pleasing, whatever, so I can try to figure out where I wanna go from here. So uh, this is an A5 Filofax Original in navy blue. I love it, I've had it for years. It is super high quality, a very thick, nice piece of leather, and it is a matte finish, so it's very easy to take care of and it doesn't get scuffed or anything very easily. I don't really have anything up here in the front. The only thing that I've got is a few little sticky notes here. These are actually clear, transparent sticky notes, and I'll show you in a little bit where I use those in my planner. They're kind of stuck to the back there, so I don't want to pull them out, but. I'll show you where I use those. I got these at Office Max or Office Depot, one or the other there, and they originally come in a sheet like this, and then I just cut them into a bunch of strips for the purpose that I need them for. So that is all I've got in the front. This first dashboard is just a sheet of cardstock paper with a beautiful floral print that was actually originally in my Carpe Diem planner that I got a couple years ago. And so I just saved this piece of paper because I loved it. I've got another piece of cardstock here in the back, just another pretty print that I like looking at. This is my personal info, name and contact info in case I were to lose my planner. And then I've got my perpetual calendar here. This was also from the Carpe Diem planner and people's birthdays haven't changed so I just left it in my planner. Alright, these monthly tabs I actually got from Plum Paper Planners. Uh, I originally got a binder from there, a spiral bound planner, and I purchased it, let's see, way back in 2014 or 2015, I believe. So these are very old, five, four or five years old, but I couldn't stick in that planner. I only used it for a couple months before I couldn't use it anymore because I'm just not a spiral bound planner girl. Um, having pages that I can't take out or move stresses me out um, because if I mess them up or something, I just, drives me crazy. So I couldn't really use the planner, but I did love these tabs particularly. They were like my favorite thing about the planner. So I took them out of the spiral binding and I trimmed them down. And uh, once I just trimmed off the frillies for the spiral bind, it actually fit really well in an A5 planner. So that was great. And I punched them and I've been using them off and on in my A5 size planners for four or five years now, and they are still gorgeous. They have a few nicks here and there, but um, doesn't bother me at all. I just really appreciate the beautiful colors and the tabs are laminated, which is very nice. So for each month, I just have kind of a monthly dashboard in the front where I keep my goals. Oops, I'll show you that again. Um, and then I also try to list out things I'd like to get done for Plans Meet Paper on there that do not always happen lately, but um, my goals for it at least. And then I just have, you know, regular monthly view where I keep appointments, tasks, bills, that kind of thing. Uh, and then a to-do list on the back. And then I just have all my weekly sections. The weekly page I've been using the most this last four or five months is this week on two page insert, and it is lined in this section, unlined in the little boxes here. And uh, in the boxes, I just track my workout for the day, my home task for the day, and then my work or dinner plans for the day. 
and that works really well for me. I love this insert. It is very similar to kind of a inkwell press flex type insert, but a little bit more minimalistic than their style. And so I really enjoy the, the layout there. Down in this bottom box, I usually just have a weekly to-do list or weekly notes. So most of the last couple months, that's how I've been planning. I've just been using highlighters, occasionally a little bit of washi tape, um, occasionally some of my little homemade stickers here. These are just Avery labels with labels on them from a, my label maker. I have a P-Touch label maker. And so that's kind of how I've been doing it. I have been using either like a notes page or a daily page sometimes. And for those, I just use a really simple two column lined insert. And that is so convenient for me because it's so versatile. I can use it for like a weekly dashboard type page. I can use it for a daily list or schedule. And it's not boxed into being one thing. It can be anything you want it to be. I use it for a grocery list sometimes. Just totally depends on the week. Most of the time I do pull those out and throw them away once I've used them because there's not really a purpose for me to have them in the future. I don't refer back to them usually. So that's kind of what my planning has been looking like. I do usually stick with the same highlighter color for like a whole month. Um, most of the time I have been. So like blue for this month is what I was using. There are definitely weeks where I didn't use a highlighter at all. Um, there are weeks I didn't plan at all because I just kind of have been busy. I've had a lot of family in town and some weeks I just either isn't helpful for me to have a planned out week uh, or I just didn't have time and the week passed and it was what it was. So this is this week and uh, you can see I just used very minimal highlighter. Last week I didn't use anything at all, just pen and paper. And for the whole month of August, I actually just have pen and paper. I just have not even had a chance to do any sort of color coding or prioritizing. That's what I use my highlighters for most of the time so far in this planner is I use them to prioritize what things uh, are either I need to grab my attention for that day. So like on my monthly view, I just highlight the things that are like big things or things I have to leave the house for or make special plans for. Uh, and then on my weekly view, I just highlight my like top priority for that day. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, I usually in my planner use either friction, pilot friction highlighters, which I absolutely love. They are so um, like mild. <laughs> They're very light, which I love about them. I'm not a super bright highlighter kind of person. I usually prefer pretty muted colors. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so in that same spectrum, I also sometimes use the Zebra Mild Liners. I find that the Zebra Mild Liners do bleed through the page a little bit more than friction highlighters do. So uh, I tend to lean towards the friction highlighters just because they there's no bleed through whatsoever but sometimes I do use these mild liners as well because they come in way more colors and they're just gorgeous shades. So that's the highlighters that I use. Uh, I'll also mention I almost always use a friction pen in my planner and I use two different ones depending on the week. Sometimes I use a friction ball slim, which is a 0.38 tip, super, super fine and um, I love how crisp it writes and it also writes very like lightly so it's not too bold on the page. Uh, I also sometimes use a 0.5 tip, just a regular fine tip pen, friction as well. I also am in the black pen camp. I know some people are blue pen, some people are black pen. I tend to be a black pen person. Um, and that's the style I've mostly been using. I have been toying around with lately, wanting to switch it up a little bit. This is next week. I planned it out and I'm just not sure what I wanna do yet. Um, I have some stamps. I'll kind of show you. I have just like classic rubber stamps, planner stamps that I've collected over the years, 
mostly from Hobby Lobby. And um, I really like the rubber ones better than the acrylic one because it's kind of a pain in the butt to like mount the acrylic ones onto a clear block all the time and then take them off and put them back on. That's kind of irritating to me. And also, I can never find ink. This is just my personal struggle. <laughs> I can never find ink that doesn't bleed through pages really bad or smear or take forever to dry. I just, ugh, I'm not into stamping ink. It's super annoying to me. And once you buy it, you can't really return it. And so it's irritating because it's like, I'll spend all this money on ink because I want to use stamps and then I never end up using them. So I've had these for a while and I do like how they look. Um, I just have not ever wanted to use the inks that I've purchased. So what I have found is if you're using these traditional rubber and wood stamps, instead of the acrylic stamps, you can actually just literally color on them, like color the stamp with a mild liner or whatever marker that you have. I've even used like a classic Crayola marker. You can just color it and it stamps perfect. Uh, acrylic stamps do not do that. They kind of, um, it like globs on there and then it doesn't go on even, but the rubber stamps come out perfect. Like. It comes out even better than it usually does for me when I use a stamping pad because I get a very even amount of ink on the stamp. So that is what I tried out for next week. It is actually using my mild liners and stamping a few things and then also using my mild liners to color code a little bit. Um, I love the idea of color coding of having a color coding key. I made one here. Um, just some different colors and having different categories for them. And I love the idea of it, but typically I try it out and then it looks a little too busy for me. And I kind of prefer a more simplistic type view. So I go back and forth on it. Um, to try and keep it the least amount of busy possible, I just did like a checkbox with my highlighters and used that as a color code instead of highlighting the whole word or writing with colored pens. Um, so I don't know, I can't decide. You let me know what you think is more aesthetically pleasing. I think they're both pretty functional for me, either just the like super basic write and pen, highlight the priority for the day style, or this little bit more fancy, color-coded, a few stamps here and there to draw my attention to big things. You let me know what you think is more aesthetically pleasing or more um, helpful. And I am probably gonna go back and forth a little bit as I decide, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I'll let you know in future videos how my weekly planning has progressed. And for the rest of the year, I just have my monthly tabs in here. I just have through December and I do forward plan. Um, I'm not fussy at all on my monthly calendar. I literally write things in at the doctor's office. I will write in an appointment. I just keep a pen in here all the time. And that's what I like about friction pens is I can erase if something changes. And I just have all of these calendars already dated. So it's super easy to forward plan and always keep track of appointments. And that's it for my calendar. The rest of my planner is basically reference information. So my first tab is reference, and this is where I've got packing lists. I've got gift ideas. I need to work on those a little bit, you can tell. <laughs> uh, and the inserts I'm using here are super minimalistic and basic. They don't even have headers on them. They're literally just different types of columned tables. And I love these inserts. These are a new creation of mine from the beginning of this year, like January 2019. Uh, I've got a couple different styles. I've got vertical styles. These ones I call landscape because I actually turn my planner to write in them and it kind of gives me more space to write. So this style where it's three even columns I use for my password tracker especially. This style where the columns are uneven, I use for gift ideas, I use for thank you card or birthday card, you know, check offs, things that I need to keep track of. I've also used it as like a 
uh, registry when I before I had my baby I would like write items and notes about it and prices so these are so versatile I love these kind of planner basics inserts that I've been using these all of these inserts are available in my Etsy shop by the way I will put the link down below if you want to check it out here's another one of those planner basics inserts it is a you know vertical uh, portrait style column. It has two columns, one tiny one, one big one. And I use this for all of my appointment notes and also for project notes. So this one is all of my dog's shots and appointment notes. He's going to the vet in about a week, so we'll have to add another listing in there. And that's it for my reference section so far. Uh, my home section, I have this morning and evening routine which I actually just added this top tab. I got some tabs from Hobby Lobby, their Carpe Diem brand, and I got them on super good clearance deal. So if it's if you're watching this in real time, you might wanna go check your Hobby Lobby because they had some of this planner stuff on major clearance, which was awesome. And they're just tab stickers that you can pull off and stick anywhere on the page. And then you can also buy these little lamination stickers that make the tabs really sturdy and nice. So I'm excited about those and I think I'll be adding some more top tabs to my planner because I really like the way it turned out. But this is my morning and evening routine for kind of my fly lady-ish system. I do plan on making a video kind of updating you guys on how I'm doing with fly lady or my home management stuff. So stay tuned to the channel to see an upcoming video on that. Um, but for this page, basically that's what I use these translucent sticky notes for. I just stick them over the boxes and that way I can actually check off each day what I've gotten done, but I'm not writing on this page. So I've been enjoying that. And the nice thing about these sticky notes is you can actually write on them with like any pen or marker, even a pencil would write on them. So I don't need anything fancy. I've thought about doing like a dry erase type thing or wet erase type thing with a dashboard, but I don't usually have a dry erase marker or a wet erase marker on me. And so I wanted to do something basic, simple that I could just use any old pen to check off throughout the day. So that's my routines. I've got zone cleaning trackers. Again, I will go more in depth on those in a future video. I've got bill trackers. And these are actually the exact same insert. Again, they're super minimalistic. They don't even have a header, so I just write in whatever it's pertaining to, and then I just check off each month as it comes up. Um, and for my bills, instead of checking them off, I write in the amount for each month. So that's all the same insert, just used in different ways. Behind the bill tracker, I do have some financial notes that I clipped together there. Those are just on lined paper. And a few extra yearly trackers in case something comes up that I would like to keep track of. Next, I've got a few projects. I'm still working on getting some stuff filled out in here, but this is what I've got so far. And I'm just using those two column inserts, just small column on the left, big column on the right to write out my notes for each project and my to-dos. Got some freezer meals I'd like to make. This was for my planner setup. Um, this is just an idea I was writing notes on that I haven't actually done yet. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be for cleaning, decluttering, and organizing. I know I've got several things I need to do with that, but I haven't even had time to write down a list yet, much less get to it. So that will be my project section. And I use this big purple divider. This was just a piece of a folder that I cut down to size and punched holes in and kind of cut slits in so I can pull it in and out. This is what I'm using to mark my current project that I'm focusing on. So for the last couple weeks, I've been focusing on trying to finish up this planner setup and that's why it's in that spot right now. Health is next. I have a whole section with just appointment notes for all of my different types of appointments. So I'm just gonna show you this front one um, for privacy reasons. This is my hair appointment 
page, and then I also have dentist appointments and doctor appointments. So for each one, I write down the clinic or salon that I go to, the person that I see there, and then notes each time I go. Or for dentist or doctor appointments especially, if I have questions ahead of time, I'll write those in on these pages as well, and then write the answers after I go. So that's my health section. That's all I've gotten here right now. I do hope to add in some more like fitness tracking, diet tracking, that kind of stuff in the future, but haven't had time currently. So just appointment notes for now. Nolan, that's my son. He's six months old, which I cannot believe. And uh, I have a section for him. This first page is just notes on some DIY toys that I've been making for him. And then I've got a list of a bunch of different photos and like events that I wanna take pictures of and take notes on throughout his first year. I've done some of these, I need to check them off, but um, these are some notes that I have for each month so far of things that he liked and didn't like and just kind of fun stuff. And then I've got vaccination schedule for him. And behind that, I have his appointment notes as well. So same style as for my doctor appointment notes where I just keep track of each time he goes and questions and answers from his pediatrician. Last is my plans meet paper section. And this is where I've got my video ideas and notes for future videos and inserts. As you can see, I've got some work to do. Uh, I'm so sorry, I have been gone for a while. Uh, I've just been soaking up this new motherhood thing. And um, I do hope to get much more active on YouTube. I have been around on Etsy this whole time, but um, I really do wanna get more active on YouTube again and really make it more of a priority. Um, for those of you that are my subscribers, thank you so much for sticking around. And so many of you have reached out to me with sweet messages, checking in on me and Nolan, and I so appreciate it. We are both doing well. Uh, Nolan had a food allergy early on that was causing some intestinal issues, not intestinal, digestive issues for him um, for several months there. And so that was not like end of the world, nothing serious in terms of health problems, but it was definitely concerning. He was having like bloody diapers and stuff. And so that was stressful. And I was working through a bunch of different little, you know, life changes for me since I'm breastfeeding to try and help with that. So we're hopefully getting a handle on it. It's definitely improved if nothing else. And I'm hoping he'll grow all the way out of it over the next couple months as well. But, um, Thank you subscribers so much for sticking around and for checking in on me. You guys are the absolute sweetest and I so appreciate every one of you. That was just a side note. I'll continue with the planner tour now. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I did want to give you guys a little update about Nolan and I. Uh, in my pocket here in the back, I have color code key. I've got um, notes on the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Those are like different foods that you know have more or less pesticides on them. It's always something I would like to work on, trying to you know work on eating healthier and buy organic produce when I can. It's usually really expensive and so I don't always go for it, but just notes, you know, things to think about. I've got some Martha Stewart Dewdrop stickers. I love the way those look. I don't use them that much, but I love them, so I keep them in here. I've got some postage stamps and just a blank card in case I need it. And then I have two top loading envelopes. The first one says inbox, so this is where I put stuff that needs to be filed or put somewhere else or just dealt with. So I've got like my library receipt for all the books I've got checked out and a couple papers that need to get put in my file cabinet. Um, and actually I should have put those in the two file box, not the inbox. Um, so that's what the second one says is the two file. And lastly, it's just a page lifter and I have a pen loop stuck on there so that I can put my pen in my planner and keep it with me all the time. And that is it for my Filofax original planner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tour. Thank you for watching and for sticking around. Please do let me know what you think about 
what style of planning you would like to see more of or what you think will be better for me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have questions, comments, if you're wondering where something came from, please leave those all in the box down below. I would love to chat with you guys down there. And if you're new, stick around, subscribe, um, and I'll see you next time on a planner video or a home organization video or cleaning, all those fun things. So I'd love to see you again. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.